beautiful San Diego, home of the 2017 US AFL Nationals, including, for the first time, an Australian division. Imagine kicking off your end of season footy trip in this amazing US city, with your club playing in the biggest football tournament in the world. Sportswear designs and manufactures custom sportswear with a focus on quality and reliability. We're Australian, we've got 10 years experience and we've got a US base in Oklahoma. Who better to trust than an Aussie company for your AFL gear? Get your customised men's and ladies AFL uniforms, outerwear and training gear from Black Chrome. Black Chrome's custom compression can enhance performance and recovery reduce lactic acid and accelerate your warm-up. Black Chrome is trusted by a number of AFL leagues, including the USAFL, as their official supplier. Try out our Design Your Own tool and see Black Chrome's full range of sportswear at blackchromeusa.com. Join us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Hello everyone from Frierson Oval on the campus of Monash University here on the outskirts of Melbourne. This is the 2017 USAFL Liberty Tour. Today it's the USA Liberty as they take on the Blues of Monash University. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Brian Barish. Great to have you along where you're watching in the wee small hours of the morning back in the States or even here in Australia where it is uh, just about 5.30 on a beautiful and slightly chilly Friday evening. The weather conditions should be perfect. Right now it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, you can work out what it is Celsius because I don't have the calculator in front of me but uh, some showers in the neighborhood but they are expected to hopefully miss us tonight as the Liberty take on Monash in this their third game. The Monash Blues play in the VAFA. They've had a pretty good season so far. Hello, how's it going? And uh, so far they've actually had a pretty good season. Uh, I believe they've knocked out of the finals which is why they are available to play tonight while the USA Liberty uh, as we mentioned playing their third game they played a uh, all-star team of the edfl the essendon districts football league and the uh what was it the western region football league which they fell on saturday night and then back uh, on Tuesday night, they defeated Boleyn Templestone, the Bull Ants, 19-5 in a very, very good game and uh, was the first ever victory for the USA Liberty in their program's history going all the way back, I believe 2012 was the first year of the Liberty. Should be an absolute cracker of a game tonight. We uh, have members of the USA Freedom who will be here in attendance and uh, at some point, maybe we'll have somebody up on special comments here for you as uh, we get set. 
that. They are just checking the, oh, that's important, the pen part. So uh, we see the teams now getting out onto the field here. The Liberty are wearing the black uniforms tonight for the first time on this tour. And the blues are in the white blue jumpers with the blue trim. Again, the Liberty win the blue with the gray numerals. And uh, we'll find out in just a moment where everyone is kicking. Talking to the girls on the bus, really excited about this game. Valerie Barbara Axtelm, who in my opinion was best on ground, very excited about this one. They've asked me to, she's asked me to call her bruiser during the course of the game, which uh, so she counts her bruises. All right, umpire holds the ball. We are underway here in Monash as the Liberty. And there is the aforementioned Ms. Barbara Axtelm going after the footy. Everyone dives in after it, stacks on the mill at one, one out there by the Blues. There in the number seven, which is Grace Mills, kicks a worm burner up high. Two on two contest, good shepherd thrown through the legs of O'Donnell, and then picked up by the Blue. She's gonna circle around, steadies for goal. Now chips it out to the near side, tapped down by one hand by Chloe Taylor, stayed with the football, and then out comes the Liberty as she was tackled over to get is Silvio, who has met quickly, but a good heads up play to soccer the ball out to the near side. Over to get it there is Wynn. Owen Wynn is thrown, oh, she was slung down very harshly there by Mimi Arnett, but in fact, it will be a free kick as a bit of a sling tackle there. So here's Owen Wynn from the Sacramento Lady Suns who will have the free kick. She'll throw that one up onto the right. That one out to the near side. Tipped off by Al Gozen. Staying with the football there again was Arnett. And then she throws that one onto the right. That hugs the boundary line. Nice job there by uh, 11. I think it was uh, it looked like Catherine Mullen who was in there. Check that. No, that was Balsley. Balsley holds her up. Umpire crosses the arms like the Monsignor and says, give that ball to me. We played a minute and 15 seconds of football here in Monash, no score. Tapped out to Mills. She kicks a subway ball that uh, deflects off the hands there of the 15 in Timothy Lau. Will the boundary throw it? About 60 meters around for Monash. The wheel in the sky keeps on turning. The ball comes back in the play. Goes down to Mills again. And the umpire has picked out holding the ball. Improper disposal there. And the free kick will go to Catherine Mullen. Plays her footy for the Minnesota Freeze. She looks to the right. Now she's going to go straight down Broad Street. The ball curled away from her. Through the hands there of it looked like Stevenson. And then throw that one onto the right again. Does Mills, who's had a fair bit of touches. Barbara Axel was able to get it out. Whoop. Hit her hand. Hit her face. Hit the ground. And then they're going to send that right back at them and going over and making a nice catch was Barbara Axel who ranged over to her left to make a nice can of corn catch. Throws that one on to the right. Pretty good ball up to this hug and hugging the sideline. Finds the field of play. Handcuffed Al Gozen, who was able to get to it on a bounce. Stayed with the footy, but a good job to intercept by the Blues. And then juggled and marked there by Ostoff. Brio, they call her, another member of the Minnesota Freeze. Brio goes onto the right foot, again hugs the boundary line, and in fact it has gone out on the full. So the umpire pretends he's an airplane and goes boom, and the ball is out of bounds for a free kick. No score. We've played uh, just about three minutes to, three minutes here in the first quarter. We've got uh, four, two, four 20 minute quarters. That one bounces in on a hop and out of bounds on the full as uh, Jackie Allett uh, just threw it onto the right and went, whoops. She's gonna want that one back. I think we're at the zoo because I just saw Shank Eponymous. Throws that one onto the right, does Balsley back in the play, into the mixing machine. Nice mark as they held a raffle and the winning number there was 19 and Owen Wynn. She's got some bit of the ball, she'll go in short. Three blue jumpers were there and then picked away. Quoka was there, ball went to ground and then picked up again by Mills who's been busy early. And then out of the back, still with it, picked up by Arendelle with her first involvement. That hand pass handcuffed Ainsley Elliott as she almost had to take that in self-defense. But now it's picked up, throw, again throws that one onto the right, and again that just finds the field of play as the kick's a little wayward in the early going, but no shortage of action here. We've played just about four minutes. It's Monash nothing, the USA Liberty nothing. 
Ryan Barish here. We want to thank uh, Rod Stokes, uh, Spokes, Rod Spokes on the line on the uh, camera for us today. It's the USA Freedom have entered the field, and. Uh, they, of course, have the game on Sunday over at Melbourne University. They need to win that game against the European Crusaders. That game will be a 10 p.m. Eastern start on Saturday night. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Stevenson tries to wrest the ball away from Wynn, and the umpire intervenes and will have a ball up. Ball is 60 meters out from the Monash target. Stevenson out of the ruck. Ball goes to ground. Barbara Axtell, and rather, Ostoff was in there. Sent long. Ball goes to ground again after uh, DeWeese couldn't get to it. As the Liberty keep the ball, or the, they keep the ball going, they handball it in looking for Quoka. Quoka throws out onto the left. She has a target there in Peterson. It bounces off her hands as she wore her defender like a coat. And then throwing that on was Sarah Rose. The ball bounced through. Again, corralled by the Liberty. Good shepherd thrown in there by Wynn. Good bump, but the Blues are able to release through Elliott. And then they get that one in. It'll bump. It'll bounce free. Just gets by the defender there. Balsley is in support. And uh, so is Ostoff as she couldn't get a, a decent handball off through the hands of Balsley. Balsley has stood up again. Michaels dropped the pill. Everyone chasing the little giant uh, lemon there. It's still on the ground. Ball really hadn't moved and they're just bumping into each other. And the umpire says as Quoka was taken down, no prior opportunity. He'll throw that one to the heavens again. Five and a half gone, still no score. Not really either team getting a good uh, scoring opportunity, although here comes Aaron. Arendelle, he, she kicks a, a grubby cockroach ball up the near side. It gets bounced free again. Again, over is Dewey's number 51. Handball back, and here they come. They're going to change the scenery. Go out into the center of the ground. Skips by Martin, Rose Martin there. But there are three black jumpers as Martin stayed with the footy, and she's going to win that one, or at least tie it up as Barbara Axel. No no, she was tied up, so it is, in fact, going to be a ball up. Allen out of the rock, controlled by the Blues, up the far side, skips through, out of the hands of Deal. She's going to turn and fire that one in towards the sticks. It's going to roll, it's going to roll, and it's going to be a goal. Wow, great job, and a good job of some, uh, of some highway traffic there by the number 35, which was Molly McFarlane as she kicked it, and she let gravity do the rest as that one rolled through for a goal. So Monash gets the first points of the game. They go to one straight six. And the Liberty yet to score. We've played almost seven minutes here in the first quarter. The Blues had some chances forward, and that was their first serious chance, and that they were able to cash in on it. And here they come again on a Friday night as Claudia Taylor couldn't handle it, and staying in nicely and throwing her down was Emily Clayton. Blues have the footy. She was tackled there nicely by Wynn, who is really throwing herself at the football. Hatting it again was uh, was Elliott, who dropped the pill. There's a kick. That would run through. But a good job by Barbara Axtelm, who does a good job to shuffle through and clear the present danger. Off the hands of Quoka. Ball goes to ground again. Wynn was knocked on her rear end. Stacks on the mill. Throw a blanket over 20 players, or at least 15, and we'll have a ball up. Again, four 20-minute quarters here in Monash University. And that one is thrown down. Here's a kick on the way. Centering ball in there by Stevenson. It's going to drop again in front of uh, in front of McFarland, who kicked the first goal. Kept in played by Deal. Probably should have let that go on out. McFarland opens up the angle and kicks another one. So Molly McFarland has kicked two showpiece goals to, uh, so far in this first quarter, and the Blues extend their lead. That takes them on to two straight 12. The Liberty at the score, and they're gonna need to play her a little bit tighter. The old line from Hoosiers, they might wanna, as if she was chewing gum, by the end of the game, they wanna know what flavor she is as the ball comes back into the center of the ground. The Liberty have played, you know, they've played two really good games. They didn't get the uh, they didn't get the full points in the first game. Well, it's a tour, so there's no points available. But I'll tell you what, they did play very well in that first game.
game, even though they came out on the losing side, it uh, definitely was a good building block. Here come the Blues as they're forced to defend again. Ostoff got her hand to it as the ball slinks inside 50. Picking that up was Becky Kraft. Throws it back from whence it came. And then taking that one on was Deweese, who took it on a hop as they control up the far side, straight in the middle of the ground, taken by Ezra Kneebone. So that's my favorite name on the team. She handballs. Well, almost turned that one over on the handball. As a good job by Karen Stablin, and she's going to win a free kick. So Stablin of the Baltimore Washington Lady Eagles throws that one onto the right, out to the far side, through the hands of Deweese. Picked up again there, looked like by Taylor. And then here, here they come inside, working, trying to work the ball inside 50. Two on two contest. McFarlane is again in there. They cycle that one around, throws that one up on the right, kicks that one for goal, but that one is tailed off to the near side. And that is through for a behind. Is just getting her foot to that was Jackie Allen, who's done a good job in the ruck so far. 2-1-13 Monash. No score for the Liberty. We are just about through the midway point of the first quarter. Brian Barish with you. Glad that you're with us as well here in Monash at Frearson Oval. Out to the near side. Spoiling there was Anna O'Donnell. Liberty forced to go back as Kraft picks it up. Rather, that's Placencio, and she was thrown to the ground. Don't think there was any prior opportunity there. And in fact, uh, push in the back has been called. So here's Andrea Placencio of the Arizona Hawks. Throws that one on to the right, out to the near side, high up into the air. Wind trying to go to it, but it's won by the Blues. Ball goes to ground. Ball, big bump in there on wind there by the 17, who I don't have. That one was thrown into the middle. That one will skip through. Defensively, there is, is Deal, who was thrown off the football. Al at centering ball. I don't think that was her intent, but uh, fire drill here and great job. Able to clear it was Barbara Axel once again, who is doing the dirty work in the back line. They're going to send it right back at him. Back goes inside 50. The Flyers fly off the hands of Boylan, controlled by the Liberty, and then getting it out of there like a house on fire was Robin Leslie. And the ball is turned over as once again it's Anthea Deweese, who's done a good job in the middle to really stop the Liberty from going forward. She'll look out to the commentary position. It drops in front of Stablin, who couldn't get to it. That ball handcuffed her. Go Going ball to going to ground as Quoka squirts out, and then that one is kicked forward, almost like a lady in waiting. Comes out to the near side. Here's McFarlane who gets to the footy, and then over to get it is Barbara Axel, who's wrapped up quickly. She turns it over to O'Donnell, who has plenty of room. Going to ship that one in short, couldn't take it there, and then throwing her off the ball there uh, was uh, Beck Jaffe, was number 12, who had it for Monash but couldn't get to it. And Ostoff is able to clear it out to the middle there now for Mullen. Mullen goes across to try and change the scenery where she finds Michaels for cutting Arendale. Here is Amy Arendale. She'll put that one out into the cow paddock. It's going to be a little bit of a run there. And then over to get it is, uh, it looks like, uh, looks like Skenechny. And then the Blues get it. And here is Deweese. Goes up the sideline. Finds a target in Elliott. Ainsley Elliott with 12 minutes gone here in the first term. And the Blues up 2-1 to no score. Deweese in the center of the ground. Throws that one onto the right, into the center. One on one contest. Nice over the shoulder catch. Believe that was Gracie Mills. So Mills in the center of the park. Throws that one in. But right at Barbara Axel, who almost had to catch that one in self defense. But she was in the right place at the right time, like Jenny on the spot from her own 50 meter arc. Threw that one up into the air. Boylan is able to keep that in front of her. She paddles it on. But there is a big bump there by uh, by Karen Stablin who has really speed that you didn't think you don't think she has but she is deceptively quick Barbara Axel knocks it forward rather that was Kraft sent right back at them quickly dropped there by uh, by deal but then the Blues swarm on her very quickly as uh, Captain Lizzie even the Minnesota freeze was held up and 13 to nothing the score we're sorry we got we got a little bit of the railing in our shot, but uh, that's about as high as the camera goes. So we are uh, glad that you're with us here. If you're watching us back live in the wee small hours of the morning, back in the states, here is Balsley from the Columbus Jillaroos. Handballs out to Silvio. Silvio with a big booming kick, but the Wees is there to take the mark over the over the head. 
She'll look for a lead. Ball goes up high in the air. And marked nicely by Ella Stevenson, who just got out in front of her defender. From the outside, the 50 plays that one into the middle. Off the hands of Barbara Axelm. Over to get it is Rose Martin. Martin is taken down. Could have been without the footy. Umpire was okay with that. Silvio continues up the far side. And then they tried to go loose. And here comes Silvio on the bootleg. Throws out one around the corner. Just past Quoka. And then over to get it. And then kept in by Quoka. Good job by Quoka to keep it on the far boundary. Really nobody there. And now Jess Nelson comes in. Just gets a big toe to it. And kicks it out of bounds. 14 and a half gone. 2 one for Monash. No score for the USA Liberty. This third game of the 2017 USA, uh, USA Liberty Tour. They have two more games on Sunday at uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Or rather it will be 8 p.m. Eastern Time. On Saturday night, they'll play West Brunswick down at McAllister Oval Royal Park. And on Tuesday the 16th, which will be Monday night, uh, you'll see them play, or check that, Wednesday the 16th, which will be Tuesday night. Ball goes in really quickly as they try to shuffle that one off the ground. Nelson was there and able to get it out was Grace Mills, was saying that uh, they'll be playing against uh, Oak Week uh, Crushers uh, on Tuesday night. U.S. time. Let's get back to the footy. The ball goes out. Of, the ball gets taken down. A little bit of a wrestling match in there, and we'll have a ball up after 15 minutes. Still 13 to nothing. Of course, the USA Revolution men. That game will be on EFL.org.au. They'll be at Montrose where they'll play Papua New Guinea. Was out at Montrose last night, and uh, they really ro rolled out the red carpet for us. And, of course, the USA Freedom play on Sunday. Uh, that'll be a Saturday night, 10 p.m. start Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific, as they take on the European Crusaders for a chance to advance to the semifinal. Ball goes into the air. Umpire takes effect, or uh, gravity takes effect. Silvio got the, got the claim, kicks that one up into the pocket, kept in nicely by the fullback, handballs it in. believe that was Kneebone on the far side. The Kneebone's connected to, that, to the halfback line, and the ball goes out of bounds as Balsley was over there on that right wing position. And that'll be where the ball in will be. Uh, about in between the right wing and right half forward flank. Ball goes to ground. Kick that one up. Off the, off the ball in. Chasing after it is Balsley who comes back. Uh, she didn't have any options there. She is claimed by Chloe Taylor and picking it up and it looks like she had spilled the ball. Umpire was okay with that. And we'll have a ball up. It's temperature are getting a little bit cooler here. Wind starting to pick up. But otherwise, a beautiful night for footy here in Melbourne's East. Umpire, or rather the ball is locked in again. And this time, it's going to be holding the ball. Looks like the ball was dragged in. And it'll be Brianna Ostoff, number three for the USA Liberty. We mentioned they're wearing the black jumpers for the first time. They go out the right side. Just gets by... One of the players there looking for Quoka, and then Tiffany Lau had it, but the Liberty will keep it going for the time being. Up on that far side, the ball goes out of bounds. Looking for the gangly runner there for the Liberty. I believe that was out. Well, thought that was out. Goes in for a moment. That actually might be Stephanie Shipley Snyder from the Columbus Jillaroos, president of the Columbus Australian Football Club. Boundary umpire spins the ball back into play. Up in the air. Again, DeWeese got more of her face than the ball. Ball goes to ground. Shuffle that one forward into the middle as Bernie Arsky couldn't get to it. Cleared out by the Blues and done nicely. Trying to take the over-the-shoulder catch there was Barbara Axelm, who has now moved up to the wing. That's where she was in the second half the other night. She was very effective as she puts the ball back into play. Over down to get it there was, uh, was Silvio again. And then the Blues are able to clear that one out. Over to get it again is Barbara Axelm. Getting yet another touch in the play. She just got a kickoff, but it bounces in on the halfback flank for the Blues. And she tries to wrench the ball away. And out of that, a free kick has been awarded, and it has been awarded to the Monash Blues. About a minute and a half to go. It's 13 to nothing. The Blues have gotten two goals from uh, Ella McFarlane, or Molly McFarlane, beg your pardon, 
And there were two nice goals. Uh, one rolled in from about 45 meters out. The other one was from an acute angle. The Liberty have only been inside 50, I believe, three times as the ball gets stood up in the middle of the ground. The umpire will ball this one up once again. Up, up and away. That one seemed to phase a few, uh, the two rucks. Goes to ground. Monash has it, and then a big tackle by Robin Leslie. She's doing a bit of double duty. She did play in that game, fairly limited minutes, but she was a bit of a factor in the game against Papua New Guinea. Got some of the football, but uh, not as much as she did when she won best on ground on Sunday night or Saturday night at Manor Lakes. Ball comes out into the middle, chasing down but getting hit high with Sarah Rose. Umpires, no good. And now it is, as, as they bring that one back, here is Deal. Deal is claimed by Taylor. Handballs that one over the top. Here they come as Saki kicks that one up onto the near side. Going after it is Bernie Arsky, but she isn't fast enough for Emily Clayton, who corrals the footy and then is met by a host of black jumpers. Umpire calls for it. And uh, didn't see the initial call. There's going to be a ball up about 60 meters from the Liberty target. And there is the siren. Quarter time at the football. Well, the Liberty did get a couple of chances forward, but two goals by Molly McFarlane are the difference at the, the score. At the end of 20 minutes of play, it's the Monash Blues 2-1-13. The USA Liberty no score. We're going to step aside. We come back. Be the second quarter of this game of the USA Liberty Tour. You're watching it on USAFL.com. Beautiful San Diego, home of the 2017 USAFL Nationals, including, for the first time, an Australian division. Imagine kicking off your end of season footy trip in this amazing US city with your club playing in the biggest football tournament in the world. Oh yeah, I know you want it. Oh yeah, I know you want it. Sportswear designs and manufactures custom sportswear with a focus on quality and reliability. We're Australian, we've got 10 years experience and we've got a US base in Oklahoma. Who better to trust than an Aussie company for your AFL gear? Get your customised men's and ladies AFL uniforms, outerwear and training gear from Black Chrome. Black Chrome's custom compression can enhance performance and recovery reduce lactic acid and accelerate your warm-up. Black Chrome is trusted by a number of AFL leagues, including the USAFL, as their official supplier. Try out our Design Your Own tool and see Black Chrome's full range of sportswear at blackchromeusa.com. Join us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.
back back here at uh, Frierson Oval on the campus of Monash University as the USA Liberty Trail the Monash Blues 13 to nothing second quarter about to get underway here as the teams finishing up in their huddles Judith Stein longtime captain of the USA Freedom Team for its first captain and uh, or she was the captain back in 2011 and also in 2014 as well. And after retiring, given the reins as the head coach for the USA Liberty and doing a fantastic job. Another number of women here who have earned the trip fairly new to football and uh, there are a number of you have a number of uh, veterans here as we mentioned Kaylin Deal has been around a bit for a number of years or a Quoka who's uh, four or five seasons in then you have a number of newer players uh, as we mentioned uh, er Erica Saki who got a touch towards the end of the second quarter or the first quarter there she's only been playing about a year as is her Philadelphia Hawk teammate Amy Arendale who has been very impressive in the first two games. Once again, mentioned uh, the broadcast schedule uh, t uh, tomorrow, which will be, or later on today, on the East Coast at 10 p.m. Eastern time, the USA Revolution against Papua New Guinea on the men's side. Uh, that game will be on EFL.org.au. Uh, here on our YouTube channel, 8 p.m. Saturday night, it'll be the USA Liberty and West Brunswick. And then on at 10 o'clock, it'll be the USA and the European Crusaders, the USA Freedom, in the third round, third pool game of the International Cup. We are underway here in the second quarter. Ball goes into the air. Knocked forward there by Stevenson. He's done well in the ruck. The Blues have actually platooned some of the players in the ruck, and that's, as we've seen Stevenson, we've seen DeWeese when the ball's been on the other side. Ball goes to ground, shoveled up nicely. Picked up, batted around, Mills had the footy, dropped the footy, Barbara Axtell throws that one onto the right, wheels around, nice mark by Robin Leslie. So perhaps the first serious opportunity is Leslie's gonna come back, this might be beyond her range, as the kick will come from 52 and a half meters out. That one will bring Raid into the air, tipped off the top. Skinechny is there for the US, but the Blues trying to get it out. Silvio put, puts the head and shoulder in. Still along the ground. And then over to get it there is uh, 33, who is uh, Ruby Oberin. And the umpire calls again for a ball up. I believe we just have the one efficient field efficient on the ground tonight. And so far, he's done a pretty good job. Out of the rock. Monash has it, but only as far as Silvio. Silvio tried to put it on her foot. Leslie is there. A hard footy in there against Deweese, and down they go. The umpire again will call that one up. Footy's starting to get a little bit harder as the Blues battening down the hatches here. Silvio, she got away from one tackle, find her helmeted friend in Quoka. Barbara Axtell, who's cheating up, tried to get the footy. It came out to the near side. That was a, a wayward sprinkler of a ball, but over to get it here is Martin for the Blues. She is tackled, and the umpire calls a high tackle there, and she is slow to get up. Not much in that. I believe she was just going for the footy. May have been on Erica Saki. So here is Rose Martin. Pretty good kick. Up in the air, off the fingertips. Not clean cleanly. Quoka, she was knocked down sideways. Throwing that one onto the right there was Allett again, who's also been in the ruck. And then a swing and a miss as Ostoff couldn't get a clean kick to it. And then DeWeese on the bootleg around, throws that one onto the right. And again out into the cow paddock where Barbo Axon will chase it down. But now coming into the scene is Deal. Deal picks that one up, handballs it up over the top, throws that one into the middle of the ground. Off the hands of a Blues player. Another one there in support. She picks it up. And then finding the back option, but that will bobble in. Barbara Axelm couldn't get it, but did on the second bite of the lemon, and then throws that one on to the left, up the side, but it's marked nicely. The ball muddled in the middle of the ground right now after the Liberty had the first couple of opportunities at it. 
as we have played three and a quarter minutes of this second term, still 13 to nothing. As McFarlane has kicked both goals so far. Out in the middle of the ground, Silvio doing right off the defender. I believe that was uh, Boylan who had it. And here they come trying to push it forward. Umpire has picked something out. And in fact, he's picked out a ball up. That'll occur in the center circle. Knocking that one down again with Stevenson. Not able to get it out to advantage as uh, Mullen going after the footy. Stayed with it and then thrown to the ground and they still battle after it and the umpire will say that'll be a ball up. The ball's moved all of about 10.8 meters in the last minute which is all you really need in life. Ball goes to ground and then out of the pack like a, like a house on fire, there is Barber Axel looking for Wesley who couldn't handle the footy. Goes to ground, paddles it on, trying to her own advantage. we swung and miss, or check that, that was uh, that was Allen who swung and missed with the right hand. Squirts free, here they come again inside 50. And then here again is Deweese who put her head over the football and won it. Found the teammate there in Oberyn, and that one is kicked in towards, but pulled everything. Then we have a whistle, and that one's going to come all the way back. And in fact, it'll be a free kick to the Blues. Five minutes gone, scoreless second quarter here at Freer Sonoval. Brian Barish with you here on USAFL.com. I believe we may be hearing from Peter Holden. As you can see, the bubbles drifting by from up on the roof. They have the Winter Carnival here tonight. You can hear that in the background. As here come the Liberty inside 50 again. Skinechny battling her defender as uh, Clayton had her clearing kick smothered. Picking that one up again is Silvio. But down goes to ground. And here come the Blues. Wagons. Ho! Up the left side now. Ball bounces straight up into the air. Out of the hands of Deweese. Over to get it there is, uh, is Wynn who threw her body but got nothing but air up over the top now but it's picked off by Grace Mills Mills will send that out into the center of the park but it's picked off by by uh, Stablin and then just out of the reach of the player there ball goes to ground again this is Silvio throws that one with a driving kick inside 50 looking for Peterson it's going to hop skip and jump away going back to get it there is Matty White who throws that one on to the right and the ball goes out of bounds and just found the field of play for a boundary throw in. Good pressure by the Liberty here, trying to get their first point of the evening. The umpire heaves the ball back into play, off the hands there of uh, Mullen. And then getting it and then clearing it out, there is Gracie Mills. Up the far side, and the ball will roll out of bounds like a greased watermelon. As we have 13 minutes and 40 seconds, roughly, to go here in the second quarter. We mentioned the weather conditions. The field looks actually in pretty good nick right now. That's the type of field if you were batting, you may want to bat first. And if you're American and you didn't understand that cricket reference, yay sports, as the ball is once again out of bounds on that far side. I haven't had too much of the cricket because it's not in season here in Australia. We'll have to come back when it is. Actually, some good cricket matches on Anzac Day back in the States as Balsley couldn't get it from her knees. She was down mushroom farming. Good smother in there again by, looked like by Arendale, looking for a target, one on two. Soccer to long, past Balsley again. And then they all, everyone dives in, pick that one and hands it up. Here's Lauren Ballsleep, just got her left foot to it. And it's marked defensively by the 24 there, which is Ainsley Elliott. She's had a few touches of the footy. Sends that one in and just out of the reach of the Liberty player. Everyone goes down. Umpire will call a holding the ball. Looks like it was dragged in. And I believe that might be Molly McFarlane. I can't see it from here. 35, who is, in fact, Molly McFarlane. Is the only two major scores of the game. Sends that one in, rebounds out quickly like a hippo off a of moon bounce. And then going over to get it is Arendale, trying to get to it. Over to get it is Chloe Taylor again. 
That one is thrown towards the sticks. It's going to come in short. Punched away there by, looked like by Leslie. Throw that one on left. Return to sender as that one came out and then cleared out nicely by Ostoff. That will go up quickly. Over to get it there is Algazin. And then out of it, they handball it in. Arendale in the center of the park. Tried to go. Whoop. That didn't come off very well. She's going to want that one back. And now that ball is locked in. The umpire hasn't blown the whistle yet. He still sees the footy. Still as they fight for it. Well, everyone tangled in there. And finally, the ball comes out as the Blues want it forward. And then here comes Barbara Axtell. Big, booming kick by the Seattle Grizzly defender. Ball takes a left turn as it was exiting off the M1. Handballs that one into the middle. Throwing that one onto the right there was, uh, I believe that was Arnett up the far side. And then here they come as it ping-pongs around again. Ainsley Elliott trying to go in there. So we have Mimi Arnett and Elliott, and the ball has come back into play quickly as Mullen went to get it, and again the ball tumbles out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in. Nearing the midway point of the second quarter. Here, as we mentioned, Winter Carnival Night. Might want to jump on one of those tilt-a-whirls myself after this game. DeWeese with a big kick up the side to no one in particular as it's a one-on-one -on -one contest, as that was uh, Allett going up against Mackenzie Carr. Ball stays in play, kept in nicely. Blues trying to keep that one in, centering ball into the middle. Here comes Quoka with the blue hair, a little bit of friendly fire. She pushed her own player off the ball, and Barbara Axelm, who once again gets a big kick, gives her teammates a chance. Leslie couldn't get to it, stayed with the footy though. And then she is tackled quickly. She's rolled over forcibly. And then a handball out the back through the auspices of, El of Elliott. The Liberty trying to gain a little bit of territory. Slipped through the hands of Arendale. Throws that one on to the right. Not the greatest of kicks. Skipped by Olivia Boylan. Umpires picked out something. And in fact, he's picked out a free kick. Might have been a high tackle. And uh, umpire just having a word with uh, Erica Saki, because I believe this is the second time she's caught a player high. And uh, I don't think there was anything malicious in that. But uh, just trying to instruct a relatively new player, Saki. It's her uh, first full season after uh, helping to found the Philadelphia Hawks women's team last year. Her husband, Jay Sackey, back in Philadelphia, a 10-year veteran of the Hawks, and I believe 25-meter penalty may have been awarded as the ball goes to the ground. That one, a little bit of an off spinner, but they chase that one around. They chase the footy. DeWeese is in there, but Quoka had it. Quoka was tackled, dropped the footy. Umpire says, let the record play. And it skips around, kept in nicely there by Stablin, but the ball goes out of bounds. Boundary throw in between right wing and right half forward flank for the Liberty. 11 and a half gone, scoreless second quarter. The Liberty are really, you know, they're, they're, they're getting those chances forward, but they're not ever able to penetrate once they get to the half back line of the Blues. They need to make a little bit better leads, and I think also the kicks need to be a little bit tighter. They're getting kicks away in desperation, which is all in good, but they need to be able to find targets on those kicks, and they're not doing that at the moment. And more importantly, the Blues are just doing a good job of playing good defense to step up and at least disrupt some of those clearance kicks. They have a free kick, though, due to the Liberty, as that one has kicked that one up high. Looking in the middle there for Becky Kraft. Had it skip by her. DeWeese on the bootleg around. Throws that one onto the right. High into the air, up to get it was uh, not Silvio, but uh, Nelson. Ball goes to ground, skips free up over the top, or rather that was Wynn who was in there. And the mark is taken by Lau, who takes a nice chess mark. So Tiffany Lau has fins to the left, fins to the right, and in the end the ball has tipped off a finger and gone out of bounds. We see members of the USA Freedom on the out on the uh, outer side here, just on the near side. 
taking in this game. They'll actually be heading out at halftime to check out the GWS Giants and the Western Bulldogs. And yours truly will be doing the same when this one is over. There's a shot for goal again. McFarlane with nobody around her, and it skips across the face for another behind. So the Blues have 14 points, and McFarlane has 13 of them. 2 2 14. That's the first score of the term. No score for the USA Liberty. Out of the back line comes Kalen Deal looking for Arendale, who had it picked off. And a nice job by Stevenson on the defensive mark. So here is Ella Stevenson. Might be at the edge of her reality. The kick will come from 45. It's a centering ball. Two players there, and it's marked by the big ruck in Jackie Allett. So here is Allett. It is a little bit closer. We'll call this one from about 30 meters out, about a 45-degree angle. Allett's kick is on the way. It tails right. It stays in the field of play. Knock that one off. Off. And again, that's Stablin, who's able to clear that one up the far side. Or it's dropped by Stablin, as Mullen had it. Dropped the footy, threw that one onto the right. One-on-one -on -one contest, picked off, and here they come the other direction. Throw that one onto the right. Who wants it? Almost taken again by Mills. Or check that, that was Stevenson. They hold him up as Barbara Axtell was in there. Liberty win the footy. Ostoff looking for Quoka. Not the greatest of kicks, and that one is picked off. 15 minutes gone. Five minutes to go. 14 to nothing, the score. Monash, two goals, two behinds. That one is sent in like a laser. Knocked down. Over to get it. That one is handballed out in the middle, picked off nicely by Quoka, who is Jenny on the spot. Up to the left side, marked by Stablin. Stablin's going to play on, throws that one onto the left, up the sideline, looking for Nelson, who's coming back in the other direction. Pick that one up in stride and finds Stablin also in stride. She's tackled, dispossessed, and holding the ball. Nope, play on as they call it, high tackle. Stablin kicks that one inside, 50, good passage of play, looking for Bernie Arsky, but not finding her. Off the knees there of Clayton, Emily Clayton, and then sent back the other way by the Blues up in the air looking again for Saki who couldn't handle it ball goes to ground picked up and then win but here comes Deweese back the other way good job of clearance by the Blues and a nice mark taken as jumping up and taking it was Beck Jaffe so Jaffe will look around instead goes the handball to Deweese who will go forward that one was a wounded duck as looking for Allen couldn't find her ball went to ground they still push it forward but marked defensively and out to the near side up in the air, looking for Wien. Couldn't find her. Could have been the ball. Dropped there by Boylan. Picked up by Deweese once again. Deweese kicks that one off the side of the boot. And it's picked off. And there is Barbara Axelm who sent that one. But that one was as ugly as me trying to learn French. And the mark was taken there in defense by Emily Clayton, who will throw that one onto the right. High in the air. Who wants it? Everybody. Who's got it? Nobody. Hits the ground. Hits the deck. Picked up by Taylor. Centering ball into the middle of the ground. Picked off nicely. She's going to run on again as McFarlane. McFarlane kicks for a goal. And McFarlane has three and the Blues extend their lead. Monash 3-2-20. And the Liberty yet the score. Well, the Liberty just had had uh, some opportunity there. They had a ch couple of chances to move it forward, but the Blues just too good in transition. And you give uh, you give Molly McFarlane enough room on that sideline, it's becoming more apparent that she will beat you. So 20 to nothing, as that's the first goal of this quarter, and there's been three goals in this match, and Ms. McFarlane has a lot of them. I think that's one short of a bag. I think a bag is four, right? Yeah, something like that. All back into the air. Monash trying to extend their lead through the auspices there of uh, Elliot, who had the footy. Went to ground. And then she is taken down. Ball in the middle of the ground now. Control
controlled there by the Liberty momentarily as Wynn couldn't get to it. And then Arendelle, or rather that uh, looked like Skinechny, or rather that was Arendelle who tried to skittle it forward. There Skinechny is going to be the end of it. She pick up, picks up the cockroach, turns around looking for Stablin, who's now moved forward a little bit. Stablin tries to stab the ball, but instead it stabs her. And then the ball goes to ground. They're still fighting after it. A little bit of pushing, a little bit of shoving. And although that's all part of the game at this point, the ball will go up. Not game being played in the right spirit, but it is a hard footy out there. It's harder than 12th grade arithmetic. The ball goes out of bounds once again. And the Liberty have had a couple of sorties inside 50. Really haven't made the most of it, as you can see up on the scoreboard. With about a minute to go here in the second quarter. Ball goes to ground again. Win. Oh, she was caught high, and in fact, the umpire has agreed with me and will call that one. Not much time to go. They're going to have to get, get a lead here, and right now they're all bunched up in the side of the field. There's nobody on this side of the 50. They need to make, they need to make some leads here and bring the ball out to the near side of the field because right now they're playing on the thin side of it. Empire will cross his arms again. 35 seconds to go. Ball comes out the back, skips free. Bernie Arsky, or check that, that's Balsley. Had it, lost it. Couldn't find it again. Balsley again going after it. Allen is in there again for the Blues. And then here they come. Can, can the Blues get one last score? As they cut that one to the inside, she's dragged down. Umpire says play on. Getting away for a man and kicking for goal. No one is back in the goal square. It's going to roll. It's going to roll. And it's going to make the distance. Great job by Chloe Taylor. Chloe Taylor on the siren. And that one, she sent that one off and said, go on, little firefly, go on. And it reached its destination. And a great end to the quarter by the Monash Blues as they get their fourth goal of the game. And at halftime, it's the Blues 4-2-26, the USA Liberty nothing. As we mentioned, the Liberty had the opportunity to get some, some uh, chances forward. And uh, really, if you look at uh, Lawrence Konechny getting the ball forward, uh, had a couple of chances. Hello. Uh, he had a couple of chances. She had a couple of chances to get the ball forward and uh, came very close as well as uh, Valerie Barbara Axelm, who was really playing well out of the back, as well as uh, Karen Stablin, who had a couple of chances to move forward. She did very well of providing herself an extra link up that sideline and uh, some some uh, chance in transition there. As we are at halftime, the score of the Monash Blues for goals, two behinds at 26 points. The Liberty, no score. We're going to step aside. We come back. It'll be the second half of this game. You, and the USA Liberty Tour, you're watching it here on USAFL.com. Beautiful San Diego. Home of the 2017 US AFL Nationals, including, for the first time, an Australian division. Imagine kicking off your end of season footy trip in this amazing US city, with your club playing in the biggest football tournament in the world.
Lightchrome Sportswear designs and manufactures custom sportswear with a focus on quality and reliability. We're Australian, we've got 10 years experience, and we've got a US base in Oklahoma. Who better to trust than an Aussie company for your AFL gear? Get your customized men's and ladies AFL uniforms, outerwear and training gear from Black Chrome. Black Chrome's custom compression can enhance performance and recovery, reduce lactic acid and accelerate your warm up. Black Chrome is trusted by a number of AFL leagues, including the US AFL, as their official supplier. Try out our Design Your Own tool and see Black Chrome's full range of sportswear at blackchromeusa.com. Join us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Beautiful San Diego, home of the 2017 US AFL Nationals, including, for the first time, an Australian division. Imagine kicking off your end of season footy trip in this amazing US city, with your club playing in the biggest football tournament in the world. here at Frierson Oval on the campus of Monash University. Score at halftime, it's the Monash Blues 
Four goals, two behinds, 26 points. USA Liberty, no score. Goals in the game so far. Three of them from Molly McFarland. And one by Jackie Allen for the Monash Blues. Brian Barish here with you on a increasingly chilly night here in Melbourne's East as the USA Liberty playing game three of their Melbourne tour. And of course, we have to think back to 2009, the very first tour by the USA Freedom, which uh, in many ways really, really helped. Uh, it was a big impetus in getting this international cup women's division started and uh, now we're up to eight teams seven from individual countries and of course the european crusaders who play the usa freedom with a lot on the line and uh, you would have to tip the freedom to be favorites on sunday morning at Melbourne University and uh, considering that the Crusaders haven't even scored a point in the first two games but they've also played two very difficult teams in Papua New Guinea and Ireland and uh, you would would think with the talent that Ireland has that after two games that they would be tipped to win the whole shebang at Etihad Stadium now if the USA win and they will most likely finish second unless uh, they win and Papua New Guinea can knock off Ireland, which would be a huge upset. We'll leave it at that. But if the USA advances the two seed from Pool B, from Pool B, they would play either Canada or Great Britain, who play each other on Sunday afternoon as well. And then, of course, they would have to get by them to get to Eddie Had Stadium on Saturday or on uh, well next Saturday. And of course, just to once again to go by the schedule, the USA Revolution men out at Montrose. That'll be a 10 p.m. start on Friday night, tomorrow night. Back in the States, or actually later on today. And then at Saturday night at 10 p.m., of course, we've got the Freedom, USA Freedom, taking on the European Crusaders. And then... Monday night, 7.30 p.m., it'll be the USA and France. And then later on Monday night, time still to be determined, it'll be that semifinal match. It'll either be a major semifinal for a chance at Etihad Stadium for the Freedom, or it'll be a consolation semifinal against either Fiji or Pakistan. One would think that it will be the latter, or will be the former, rather. Umpire holds the ball off. Third quarter footy is underway. As the Liberty trying to climb out of a 26-0 hole. And that one is kicked out of the ruck. Picking it up again and turning out is Elit. And then she was thrown down and holding the ball. And a good job by Becky Kraft. As Kraft goes out to the right side. Throws that one out into the cow paddock. Going after to get it is Silvio. She is pursued. And then cutting her off at the pass there was the uh, half forward. And then getting taken down was... Laney Michaels, number 12, who played a very big role. And in fact, or check that, that was Amy Arundel. As Arundel had a fantastic game the other night. As the USA Freedom are heading out, as we were just talking about them. They're on our way to watch GWS and Western Bulldogs at Eddie Had. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, here they come again. Throw that one high up into the air. It's a ski jump ball. Camping out under it, there was... Placencio, but she's able to get it. Rather, that was Jen Ferrucci. I called her by her teammate's name. Whoops. I did that before. So that was Jen Ferrucci, and then out to the near side. Dropped by Stablin, but stayed with the footy nicely. Slung around like a ragdoll by Beck Jaffe. And then that one is thrown onto the right, and then sent right back at them inside 50. And then tracking back, and that one's going to roll. One-on-one -on -one contest. Again, Allen is there, being chased by Balsley. Tried to get the handball off. Good job by Balsley to affect it and make it ineffective, as it were. Then she stays with it. Here's Allen able to get around, throws that one onto the right, ducks down in front of Sally Deller. Deller stayed with the footy. She still has it. And she is held up. The umpire calls for a ball up as it occurs 25 meters out from the target. Ball goes high in the air. Wasn't a very convincing handball. Umpire wants a second chance. And we'll give it to him just that one time. 
Ball goes in the air again. Allett wins the hit out. Again, looking for Deller. Who's really this first time, first couple of touches for her. That looks like a self-pass, but into the middle it goes. A nice pick off, and here comes Robin Leslie back the other way from the champion Iron Maidens. And that one is Mark. Nice job of stepping up and taking the mark. And I believe that was McFarland going up the far side. It drops down in front of Ella Stevenson, and the ball is rustled out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Just underway, third quarter, three minutes gone. 26 to nothing, the score. Ball comes back into play. Staying with it there, and then just getting it on. Whoop. Forgot the footy as Wynn tried to go forward, but the mustard came off the hot dog, threw that one on to the left. That one will skip free. It'll bounce in front of McFarland again. She's circling the football, again popped up into the air, thrown backwards there, finds McFarland, shuffles free, kicks for goal, marks by Anna O'Donnell, who just got free, and Balsley was just a step too slow. So here is O'Donnell, who looks to add her name to the major score sheet. The kick will come from about 15 meters out, about a 55 and a half degree angle. Kick is up on the way. It is dead center perfect and a goal to Monash, their fifth of the game. 5-2-32 for the Blues, no score for the Liberty. And Adam McFarlane was able to get free and get away from Warren Balsley, who's actually, for the most part, having a pretty good game. And she was caught maybe on her back heel just a little bit, but another goal to the Blues as they extend their lead. And the Liberty are, I think, trying to get the ball out. It looks like they're getting caught too much in the congestion. And as we saw at the end of the second half, they're really not leading as well as they should be up on that far side, up on the near side. Out of the hands of Ostoff. Of course, the drops don't help as well as there is as there is Deal who turned the ball over. It's one on two as Anna O'Connell, who kicked the goal there. She was, ha she was harried, harassed, and thrown down to the ground. And everyone down mushroom farming. Ball is still in dispute. It's a hard footy out there, harder than my brother's head. And gets free. And that one came through. And there is Arendelle throwing her, after, uh, throwing her off the football. Staying with it is Deal. Deal just got her right foot to it. Arendelle in there again, putting her head down. Trying to win the footy. Skips free to Chloe Taylor. That one is thrown on to the right. One-on-one -on -one contest. Allen had it bounce free, but running on and kicking another one was Grace Mills. That was a room service bounce for Grace Mills, and she slammed it home, much like me slamming a beer on the bar at the end of it. 6-2-38 for the Blues. The Liberty at the score. Five and a half gone third term. Starting to unravel a little bit defensively for the for the Liberty, but really not a whole lot you can do that. That was just good running by Mills, who joins the score sheet. As Mills has won, Allett has won, O'Donnell has won, and McFarlane, who had the first three. We're underway again. What can the Liberty do? They try to push it forward out of the middle. Leslie in there, providing good pressure. It spills out. They get the footy, throws that one onto the right. It's a wounded tort. That one will bounce inside, picked up by Ferrucci, but she was stripped of the footy. Leslie is in there trying to keep it free, as is Kaylin Deal trying to lean on her opponent. She's trying to pull it out of there, and the umpire says that the ball was dragged in, and it'll be a free kick, and it will go to Kaylin Deal. Deal from the Boston Lady Demons, who is uh, the president of the Boston Demons as well, and does a fantastic job. Leslie was almost decapitated. Umpire didn't seem to think so, and then throwing that one on to the right. One-on-one -on -one contest. 
It'll drop in front. Going after it is Deal again, who stays with the footy. Just overran it. Went in for the second bite of the lemon. She's thrown off the footy, and there were two blue jumpers there. Waiting for it, getting it there was O'Donnell. Not the greatest of kicks, but it skips three. And then here comes Barbara Axel. She's like a bullet. She throws that one onto the right. That was a pretty good kick. Dropped in front of uh, Bernie Arsky, who couldn't get to it. As Michaels puts her head onto the footy, and the umpire will ball it up. 70 meters out from the Blues target. This is a little bit bigger of a field, it seems like, than they were playing the other night in Boleyn as Barbara Axelm takes another mark. Valerie Barbara Axelm, probably one of the most determined players in the league and on this team, and she is really making a name for herself as a, defend as a defendable defender, and vice versa, as it turns out. Ball again locked in on the ground. Ray Hale. The pride of Wall, South Dakota, was in on the footy. First time we've called her name tonight, and the umpire has spotted a free kick. And it will go to Anchorage, Alaska native Amy Arendale. There's some alliteration for you. She looks for a lead, goes out into the middle of the ground. Knocked down, going to be picked up, and uh, looks like there was high contact there. And that's been spotted, and a free kick will be coming to Ella Stevenson. So here is Ella Stevenson, has Dewey's to her left if she wants her, and she, she's going to go long. High into the air, 2-1-2 two two contest, off the fingertips. Staying with it is Deller, 61. Boy, she's a tall drink of water, isn't she? Going to pick it up there was Michaels, and then here they come. There is Deller, throws that one onto the right, just off the just off the fingertips. They try to steal it away. There's McFarlane again, and McFarlane has kicked another one. Well, she made something out of nothing. She went abracadabra and hocus pocus and poof. Goal number four for Molly McFarlane. 7-2-44 as McFarlane now officially has a bag of goals. And that's a burlap bag because we don't use plastic. That's just not biodegradable. Now they're just uh, really showing their class on the forward end here are the Blues. Interesting to see if uh, Stein drops some extra defenders back in defense. Here they come again as they go through the middle off the hands of Barbara Axel. And now they paddle that one forward again. Staying with it. And then a handball up looking for Deller. Intercepted there by Carr. And Carr goes out to the right side trying to clear it. Saki in after it, looking for Quoka who got it on a hop, but she dropped it. And here come the Blues, high into the air, of looking again, it patches through, here's McFarlane again, this one's for number five, it's going to roll, and it's there. That's number five for Molly McFarlane. And the Blues have hit the half ton. 8-2-50 for Monash. And the Liberty just having, just trying to clamp down on defense. But uh, it's becoming apparent you can't stop Molly McFarlane. You can only hope to contain her. And here they come again. Again, looking for her off her fingertips. There is Deller there to Crum, who picks it up, tries to spin away. Losing the footy there was Carr. As the Liberty desperately trying to get it out now. As they feel the pressure trying to tighten in, Leslie says, I'll take that, thank you. Throws that onto the right foot, high into the air. Dropped, ball goes to ground again. Quoka in there, paying vigil. And it's kept along the ground nicely. Silvio tries to pick it up. Throw that one onto the left again was Leslie pushing forward. Looking for Bernie Arsky, but couldn't find her. And then, whoa, big tackle being thrown to the ground there. And then out to the near side is the Blues able to release. Over to get it is Ballsley. Tried to take it up with one hand, but couldn't. That one goes inside 50, just out of the reach of Carr. Numbers here as they're queuing up. They try to get the ball free, looking for Deller, but a good job by Briostov. 
to hold up everything. We've played 12 minutes of this third term, and the Blues up 50 to nothing. Skittles out to the 50 meter arc being sent back at them looking in knocked down again by Michaels again McFarlane will she have a half dozen nope just off to the side for a minor score so Molly McFarlane up and about here 8 8 3 51 9 3 51 or yeah it is 8 3 -51. Kick it out, and that is a shot for goal as they were able to pick it free. And it's again off to the side for another behind. So the Blues now locking in, and as I mentioned before, I think the Liberty just need to lead out a little bit better. 8 4 52 the score. And right here is Deal looking out again, goes in short. That's what they need as Robin Leslie takes a nice mark. Now they got to string another one together. They got Deal who can make a lead. They got Michaels. Instead, she's going to go straight down the guts and almost taken there by Michaels. Had it go off of her hands. Kicked that one on the outside of the boot in the middle looking for win. And now it's Leslie. Leslie had it go off of a shin. Going in the chase after it there is Mullen. And that one is punched in forward off the top. Balsley can't get to it. Stayed in. Here come the Blues. There it is again looking for Allett. Allett's kick is off to the side. And off for another behind. And again, it was uh, Molly McFarlane who helped set that play up. That takes them on to 8-6-54. Is what we have in the up here. It looks like I had 53, but it's 8-6-54. It is. It is 53. Well, we'll find out at three-quarter time, won't we? <laughs> as they send that one back and again, again looking as Michaels is able to parry it away. Check that was Ballsley who was able to parry that one away. And once again, under fire are the Liberty here. As they keep that one in, Allett, the ball goes out of bounds once again. Allett's had a lot of the ball in the forward line. We mentioned McFarlane. Ellis Stevenson has done a good job in the middle of the ground. But the Liberty having trouble releasing the footy. Ball comes spinning back in the play. Gets knocked down. And clearing it out again was Robin Leslie. Only as far as Barbara Axtell, who goes forward. Another big booming kick by Valerie Barbara Axtell. Looking for Bernie Arski, but couldn't find her. And now here they come back the other direction. And then looking, and then that one is tailed to the ground. Ball just spins loose. And here come the Blues. That one out in the air. One-on-one -on -one contest. As Deller able to get away there from Carr for the time being. Deller on it. She's able to pick it up. She tries to bootleg around and can't. And turned over to Erica Saki, who had her kick smothered and covered like some hash browns. And then that one is sent back in by the Blues into the pocket. It'll bounce. It'll skip. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be a boundary throw in roughly 25 meters around. Brian Barish with you here in the third quarter. Under five minutes to play in it. It is 53 to nothing to the Monash Blues. Five goals by Molly McFarlane, and that's been really the big key. They're going to send that one up high into the air. One-on-one -on -one contest. Off the hands, again looking for Allett. Spills out in front. Now they try. Oh, sold some candy. Threw that one on to the right. That one will go, but it takes a bad bounce. It skips away as Even was able to get, was had it by, uh, bounce by her. And then going back to get it is Grace Mills. And that one is speared out. That one will go through. Picked up again there by Allett. Ball cries the crowd. Boot says the umpire. Ball goes to ground again. And there is Quoka who picked it up. Ball almost spilled out of bounds as they keep it in. Stablin is in there. Had it and lost it again. As is Arendelle. And they'll sit on it on the far side. And once again, it'll be a ball up. Three and a half to go. And again, it's 53 to nothing. Brian Barish with you here on a cold Friday night here in Monash University in the Blues. 
It's been all of them. They cut to the inside. That one going to go inside, but tracking back and almost taking the mark was Balsley. She'll come out the right side. She throws that one onto the right. That one's going to be very tight. In fact, it's going out on the full. Well, that was always going to be difficult. Not as difficult as explaining Americans this game, but in fact, it's going out on the full. And once again, you know, the kicks are there. They just got to settle down. And there's a nice mark once again, or at least it was off the hands as once again, Allett was over there. That's the key. They're getting some of these desperation kicks. They're just throwing it onto the boot, and that's all and good, but they got to make those kicks more useful, and that's one of the reasons why the Blues are getting so many opportunities. That one goes off to the right again, and they'll send that one right back from whence it came. McFarlane is chased down, thrown to the ground. Great tackle there. And it's... Lizzie even, the captain of this team, who will go out onto the right side, plays that one up, but it's intercepted again, I believe, by Dewey's. And they keep with it. Ball goes off the feet of Balsley. She gets it back off a nice job by Carr. Throws that one onto the right. Just finds the field of play. Kept in by the Blues on the far side there. The half forward flank. Here's DeWeese. Throws that one onto the right. One-on-one -on -one contest marked by McFarlane. And once again, Molly McFarlane had enough room around her to serve breakfast, lunch, dinner, and probably an early tea. And based on what we've seen tonight, you might want to chalk this one up. 25 meters, 45 degree angle. McFarlane looking for the half dozen. Kick is on the way, it's gonna be short. Not marked, ball goes to ground. Everyone jumps on it very quickly. And a dog pile in front, three meters out. Maybe even more, maybe more like six meters out. Ball goes into the air, tap backwards, straight out in front. McFarlane gets her sixth. And Molly McFarlane absolutely having her way with the USA Liberty. 9-5-59 for the Monash Blues. No score for the Liberty with under a minute to go. 40 seconds in point of fact. And the Liberty trying their best and like I said, might be a good idea to see if they can have some of these wings maybe move up a little bit closer and provide better outlets because that's the only way they're going to get the ball down the field, it seems like. But as the ball goes to ground, here is Saki. Let's see what they can do. They got to hurry here. Saki drops it in front, looking for Skenechny, or rather that's uh, Shipley Snyder. And then try to go out the back. Bernie Arsky trying to clear some room. Everyone down on their knees, mushroom farming. It squirts out. Picked up there by Kneebone. And then out the back they go. Crash Boom Opera, there's the siren. Well, the Monash Blues have hung another couple of goals as McFarland has upped her total to six. And at three-quarter time, it's the Monash Blues, 9-5-59. The USA Liberty, nothing. Look at the goal scorers here as McFarland has six. O'Donnell has one. Allen has one, and I believe Grace Mills had the other goal. Those are the nine tallies for the Monash Blues. Three-quarter time. We'll be back for the fourth quarter of this one. You're watching the 2017 USA Liberty Tour here on USAFL.com. Beautiful San Diego, home of the 2017 U.S. AFL Nationals, including, for the first time, an Australian division. Imagine kicking off your end-of-season footy trip in this amazing U.S. city, with your club playing in the biggest football tournament in the world.
Lycrome Sportswear designs and manufactures custom sportswear with a focus on quality and reliability. We're Australian, we've got 10 years experience and we've got a US base in Oklahoma. Who better to trust than an Aussie company for your AFL gear? Get your customised men's and ladies AFL uniforms, outerwear and training gear from Black Chrome. Black Chrome's custom compression can enhance performance and recovery, reduce lactic acid and accelerate your warm-up. Black Chrome is trusted by a number of AFL leagues, including the USAFL, as their official supplier. Try out our Design Your Own tool and see Black Chrome's full range of sportswear at blackchromeusa.com. Join us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Sonoval on the campus of Monash University. The USA Liberty Tour continues at three-quarter time. It's the Monash Blues, 59, the USA Liberty, no score. And joining us just in time for the fourth quarter from girlsplayfooty.com, the man, the myth, the legend, Peter Holden. I, I think the myth uh, describes everything. I've been watching online as I've uh, come here to Monash University, all the way up from Chelsea, a nice hour bus trip. But I've seen Monash run away with the game in the third quarter, and I think that just shows their experience and their fitness that they've had of playing a full season. It's important to note that the USA Liberty beat Wolleen Templestow uh, on Tuesday night. They're a Division Four side in the VAFA women's competition. Monash Blues are a Division One, so we're talking about three levels up. That'll change again for the USA Liberty when they take on West Brunswick Sunday morning, 10 a.m. local time. Uh, West Brunswick uh, women's, the seconds that the USA will be playing, they're technically not in the VAFA divisional structure, right. but they, with a bunch of sides, played in what they call the unofficial Division 5. A bunch of scratch matches because six clubs said, we've got too many players, uh, including Melbourne U, who had a fifth senior women's team. That's fantastic. So they had to throw them all together, and they played a series of scratch matches. So essentially, you're playing against uh, a garage of women that have only played about five or six games, so that could be very evenly matched. It might even tip in the favour of the Liberty on Sunday morning. Yeah, and you know what? Um, the one thing that Judith Stein has said as we're about to get started here in the fourth quarter, one thing Judith Stein had said uh, in coming into this was that the um, their, the goal was to play different levels of teams during the course of this tour. So as Peter mentioned, playing Division One, playing down in Division Four, really they're getting a nice rainbow, if you will, of the different sides. As the fourth quarter is underway, okay, let's see what the Liberty can do as they try to push forward, but uh-uh, that one's going to get cleared out the back. Again, that looks like McFarland ch choosing in after it. Check that. That might be Ainsley Elliott who went to the football. Ball pops straight up into the air. Nice over the shoulder mark there by Big Jackie Allen as the, as the uh, Ruck. She's done an absolutely wonderful job. She had a goal in that third quarter where it seemed like everyone was getting on the score sheet. So here's the kick. Oh boy, that's a pretty good kick into the popcorn machine. Sheena goes, ball goes to ground. It looks like that was touched over the line, and in fact it was for a minor score as they've hit 60. That takes them on to 9-6, 60 for the Blues. No score for the USA Liberty. The one thing I've noticed, Peter, and I've been saying is that you know, the Liberty really aren't leading out a whole lot. They're not really giving them a whole lot of options out of the back. No, they're not, and unfortunately, I mean, uh, it, it just comes to experience in playing games. They don't get to play 18 aside football a lot, the Americans, so they're not used to that linking up of play. They're more used to what I call the old uh, B-grade type of women football, which was just kick it long and chase after, particularly that you play on the smaller grounds. Centering ball, knocked down in front. Deal, trying to get free or check that. That's Ferrucci. But then up, trying outside the boot. A little footballing jiggery-pokery, and that has gone, it looks like it's gone through for a behind. In fact, it has. Well, she tried for champagne and ended up with grape juice on that one as that takes them on to 9761. And once again, the Liberty having trouble getting the ball out of the back line. Going up into the middle of the ground, here is Arendelle. 
Kicks a worm burner up front. Here is Robin Leslie. Tried to throw DeWeese off the footy and couldn't. Ball goes to ground once again. Trying to cycle that one through. Stood up two on one. Umpire crosses his arms like the Monsignor. We'll have a ball up out on the wing. Couple of, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you talk about Robin Leslie, who had the ball. She was the player of the day for the Liberty against uh, the Manor Lakes. She's a very, very good player, probably just on the fringes of getting into the Freedom team, I would say. She's the type of player that if you put in a, a lower division in the VAFA, you'd call her maybe like a half or like a centre half forward. She's that type of target that'll work between the wing and the forward pocket and has the ability to kick goals. She did actually play uh, for the Freedom because she is on the Freedom mm. roster. She played the other day against uh, Papua New Guinea. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast, uh, she actually did get a couple of touches. She was used uh, fairly sparingly in the fourth quarter, in the third and the fourth quarter, but did get some touches and did affect play uh, during the course of the game, which is very good. And she's that type of player. As the ball gets kicked in, almost intercepted there by uh, Al Gozen. But here they come. Oh, great smother. Great smother by Becky Kraft. And they're able to get out of jail up on the far side. They hold a raffle for that one. Nice mark over the back there by the 47, Mimi Arnett. Unless they call something back. No, that is going to be a free kick. So Arnett from outside the 50 puts that one into the popcorn machine. Ball goes straight to ground. Deal trying to hold off her opponent. Does so successfully because back the other way they come. And that one is steered along the ground. Two on one contest. Just got it off to the right. Out in the middle. Picked off by Mike by a Mullen. Mullen goes straight down the guts out of the hands of Leslie. Skips by Al goes in who now has to get on her horse. Great job by Leslie to get on it. But whoop, they all ran overran the football. And then picking it up there was Eliza Millen, who threw it right back at him. And then out to the right, throwing that onto the right was Chloe Taylor. Ball goes out to the side. Will she keep it in? Yes, she will. Ball continues in the play. Carr able to keep it along the ground. They keep it back in. Again, it's Taylor. Bops that one in, looking for Deller. And here they come. It's out in a cute angle, trying for the centering ball. Off the fingertips. She's going to stay with the footy. Goes, has, gets it. Oh, just bumped free. Lost the football in the process. But then clearing it out nicely was Quoka. It's only going to go as far as Sarah Rose, who sends it back from whence it came. Ball goes to ground. And just got a left there with Silvio, looking for Barbara Axelm. Again, now, again, it's Deller. Deller with a quick centering ball off the hit, fingertips there of Carr. As the ball goes to ground once again, throws that one onto the right, able to get it out into the middle of the ground, but only blue jumpers. Picking it up there was Mills, who has a goal in the game. Throws that one up front. The ball goes out, running into the corner, handballs it back. There it is, again, off the outside of the boot. One-on-one -on -one contest, and Deal, and Deal will just be happy to shepherd it through for a minor score. It's a rush behind. That takes them on to 9-8-62. USA Liberty yet to score. They're getting the pressure forward, and at least in this fourth quarter, they seem to be coping with it a little bit better. You mentioned before about Lilani Silvia, of course, from the Los Angeles Dragons. Best way to describe her for the Aussie listeners is she's very similar to Brittany Benici out of the St. Kilda Sharks and on the Collingwood AFL list. A player that can uh, play forward pocket or midfield, that nuggety small type of player, very quick, always whipping around the packs. And wh whipping that one on for goal and just going off to the side there, off the kick in as they were able to uh, steal another kick in there was Emily Clayton and the ball hooked away, almost looked like uh, a bad four iron off the tee on a par three. So that takes them on to 9-9-63. Weiwani Silvio originally played for the Boston Lady Demons, went to the Sacramento Sun. She was living in Los Angeles and uh, she, along with with Eileen Yoon as well as Lauren Sullivan to start that LA Dragons team, which we mentioned on the broadcast the other night, already up to 20 players, may very well bring a full team to Nationals. And the ball going to head back inside, and the ball's going out of bounds on the full as they tried to put another one, but that one has gone out on the full. So we've been talking tonight, we've been talking about the Liberty, and we have the USA Freedom, of course, playing the European Crusaders on Sunday. And uh, on paper, you'd have to tip the Freedom as the favorites. Indeed. Unfortunately, the Crusaders haven't got on the scoreboard yet. But unlike Pakistan, they haven't been thumped by 100 points plus. So the one thing the Crusaders have proven when they've lost by about 50 points and 60 points, respectively, is their defense holds up. They're managing to hang in there. They've just got no transition going from the wing up to the half-forward line. And it's very difficult for a team that's essentially 
strangely, uh, only a squad of 23 of a mixed bag of players from all different countries that only literally met each other when they uh, hit Melbourne on Friday, the day before the carnival began. Yeah, and I was talking to Colleen Duque actually a little bit earlier today. We were out at the uh, World Footy News and Footy Almanac luncheon up in North Fitzroy and uh, got a chance to talk to them. And you know what? They were, she was very uh, optimistic and upbeat, even though, as you said, they haven't scored any points. Uh, they feel like they're getting better. Uh, they're, they know they're playing a tough USA side. They're probably going to play a tough Fiji and Pakistan side as well. And just quickly, the good thing for the Crusaders and teams like Pakistan as well, who haven't been fearing as well, is that they do have two more games, even when they don't qualify for the finals. There is, I guess, what you call the minor finals, things from five down to six. Yep. And then there's placing some first all the way down through to eighth. So those that don't make Etihad Stadium, so it's technically ranked third through to eighth. 3v4, 5v6, 7v8 playoff on Friday at Royal Park. Yeah, those will be some good matchups too. And uh, especially uh, some of the teams like the European Crusaders. It'll be fun to see Fiji play again, as well as Pakistan as the ball goes out of bounds. And I'll, and I'll say this, um, reading Jason Arnold, what he was saying about the match, even though, you know, his team was comfortably ahead, of course, winning by 188 points. The Pakistanis played that game in the right spirit. The Canadians played that in the right spirit. And uh, he had a lot of hope for that Pakistani women's outfit. And uh, the Fijians would be frightfully unlucky losing by a point to Canada. If they had won that game, they would have been going into a match against Pakistan where it would have been the case of win and by how much can you win to see if you make the semi-finals. So, uh, you know, the bounce of the ball one way or the other. Fiji, unfortunately, won't see semi-finals action. But the form that they've shown, they could easily finish high as fifth. I think it's between them and Papua New Guinea to, to see who finishes fifth. Ellis Stevenson went for a goal but said hello to Wilbur Post. Hello. And then at the kick-in was intercepted by Sarah Rose. Another interception off a kick-in. And it goes inside and finds Allen. So here is Allett who will go back. The kick is up on the way. It'll just be close. Tip down in front. Desperately trying to get it out of there. It looked like uh, Kraft who gets it onto the right foot and gets it out. Chasing after it is Stablin, but it handcuffed her. Bounced the wrong way. And then straight out into the middle of the ground. Throwing that one on again was the number seven there, which is Mills, who had a very, very nice goal running on in the third quarter. And they'll stand up and hold that one up and we'll have a ball up once again. Although the USA aren't on the scoreboard at the moment, they're trailing 64 to nil. It's still actually a respectable score because um, Monash University Division 1 played in a grading a game against the now Division 2 side, the Oakley Crushers, and beat them by 100 points mm. in a grading game only a few months ago. So it is still a respectable score and effort being put up by the Liberty. It's only just a bad third quarter that saw the damage done. And of course the Crushers will play the Liberty uh, on Wednesday Wednesday, and we'll have that game here for you on USAFL.com. By the way, I'm Brian Barish. You're hearing the voice of Peter Holden as well. We have uh, Rod Spokes, our first-time cameraman, doing an absolutely wonderful job here at Monash University on a chilly night, but a good night for footy. We had some shower threats a little bit earlier, but it looks like that's going to stay off. And, of course, a great atmosphere with the Winter Carnival here at Monash Uni going on in the background. This ball goes up on that far side as the Blues trying to play a little bit of defense here. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a boundary throw in about 70 meters around from the Liberty target. Ball comes spinning back in the play. High up into the air as again Deller was in there on the ruck. Sally Deller, I believe, is one of their junior players. Uh, she is a tall drink of water, Peter, and uh, once again, height, a little bit at a premium in the women's game, especially here in Victoria. Indeed, not only just height as well, and the one thing that's been taught to some of the international players while, while they're over here, some of them like the USA and Great Britain just today who went to KB Performance, which is Katie Brennan, the Western Bulldogs captain's uh, uh, gymnasium, her business. Mm -hmm. uh, they're being taught about overhead marking. That's the one thing they're trying to improve in the international game, particularly while the players are out here. It's a very critical thing, taking those overhead pack marks. Stevenson able to wrench the ball free. Kick that one up on the right side. And that one will find the boundary line and go out of bounds. You mentioned
mentioned the KB performance and Katie Brennan, the USA Freedom, had the opportunity earlier this week uh, to go out and see that. And we got, finally got a chance to meet Ms. Brennan uh, with where we were doing the Outer Sanctum podcast as well. Uh, they're, they're kicking a coffee. And uh, one thing that I'll say over and over, and you know this as well, having talked to everybody, they are just absolutely wonderful people and very keen to share knowledge of this game with these international players. Ball goes out of bounds again. Looks like he went out on the full. It'll be a well, free kick. One player that you'll see that we've been talking about is just with the blue hair, Laurie Quaker as well. Now, she's had experience. She's played for Wollongong in the Sydney competition. You can see that. She also played in the IC14 Carnival. Yep. Uh, she's the type of player, though, she was playing here in Victoria. Let's say she was at a VFLW club. I'd probably say uh, she'd be back and forth between VFLW and playing in, in the reserves. But she's a good player who would probably fit into something like a halfback role. Coming off halfback, loves going in for a hard contest and trying to get a clearing kick. Probably needs a little bit of work on the targets that she's hitting, not just grabbing it and slamming it forward. She's got a nice kick, just it's all about focus and vision. I think you can say that about most of the players, especially tonight. They're getting a lot of desperate kicks off, which is all in good, and there's a mark taken and back the other way come the Blues. Uh, a lot of kicks going the Blue Jumpers. They're getting a lot of kicks blown away, or, or just away, and uh, as the mark is taken, there's Valerie Bowerax, I was having another game today, into the middle looking for Michaels. Ball gets tipped to ground. Over to get it is Nelson, who very gingerly throws a shoulder in. Picking that one up was Olivia Boylan. And Boylan tries to rush forward. She's met by a sea of black jumpers. The ball wriggles free. And there Silvio throws that one onto the right. Drops in front looking for Wesley. But there is Deweese. Uh, then over to get it is Arendale, who tries to throw her shoulder into the footy. And the umpire says, ball it up on the near side. And this is a good thing to see from an international player that Valerie Barber Exdom uh, tried. Even though it didn't quite work out, it's the right thing to do. When you're trying to go for a switch to play with the football, instead of just looking up the line, you're looking sideways. You don't want to go 90 degrees directly sideways. You do that, it puts the ball into a contest and allows an opponent to say, it's going to this spot and running to it. What she did and what you're always trying to do is kick forward and on an angle at 45 degrees. So what you're trying to encourage is your teammates to run into space, run on that ball going forward, and you're moving forward. Worst case scenario, if it gets turned over, the opposition still has to have one more kick to get it back to the same position that you were at. First try inside 50 in this fourth quarter for the Liberty, and as quick as it went in, it went out as Kate Peterson couldn't get to the football. As they try to get some sort of tangible evidence of the game here at Monash University, trailing 64 to nothing. It's a Paul McCartney special when I'm 64. Throwing that one on to the right again is a, is a Stevenson, who's played very well in the middle, got a lot of the football, probably deserved the goal when she was in the forward line. And there they find her again as she is dragged to the turf and holding the ball is the call. Great job by Leilani Silvio, who's beginning to step up. Here comes another chance inside 50, three on one. Over the head there, again looking for Wesley. That may have been high tackle. Nope. Mo uh, Michaels picked it up, lost it, throws it back. Arendale onto the right, sits out in front. They get behind the defender, Peterson. There's a handball, studies, kicks. And off to the side, as it looked like. Amy Berniarski, or check that, I believe that was Catherine Mullen who kicked it, and it's going out on the full. 28. Oh, no, it was Robin Leslie. And that's, and that's what I liked. At least what she was trying to do, she saw what the contest was. She saw her teammates going to win it. So she goes, I'm going to run forward, run to the advantage, and call for the ball. Now she's really, I think, across the whole tour, well, especially for the Liberty, she's been the best player so far as they cycle that one out of the back, or at least they try to here. Looking around. Is going to be sent in towards goal. That's a pretty good kick, but a nice job by the defender there. And it looks like Deweese, yep, 51. And that's uh, Xanthea Deweese, who's done a great job of backing up. But the Liberty up and about a little bit here. Again, trying to get their first point in the game. Good Sheppel thrown in by Leany Michaels. They handball it back as Skinechny. Not the greatest of handballs, but they do well to keep the footy to the Liberty. Good Shepherd thrown in there. And then picking it up again is Barbara Axdell. A low line drive, and that one will get through and go out of bounds. But Judith Stein will be happy with this as they're starting to pin their ears back and keep the ball in that.
that pocket. Small things to work on, particularly when they look at playing for their own clubs, the Nationals. You saw the shot on goal. I guess for most women's footballers that aren't at the top state league or national level, they are generally going to struggle to kick for goal any more than 30 metres out. That's where it needs to be creative. If you're a, a winger or a halfbacker that has pushed up the ground, instead of just standing there on the circle, one of you, particularly the one with the best kick, needs to take the initiative, run past, screaming for the ball. You may not be taken every time, may be one time out of ten that they go to you, but when they do, you're hitting it with speed, you receive the ball, you've got no defender going with you, you've got no one coming at you. That would allow you an easy shot from about 25 metres out on the run. Kaylin Deal is pushed up a little bit. Usually she plays in the back line, and I think Judah Stein has just thrown. You've got, um, it looks like 17 Liberty players within 80 metres of the goal, and 15 of them are inside 50. So they're not messing around. They want some sort of points out of this game as Lenny Michaels throws a nice hip and shoulder in to try and get the footy. Desperation football there, kept in by Arendale, who tries to keep it, and then she is bowled off the footy, and that will be a free kick. And it will go. It looked like Amy Arendale. That might be somebody else. Throw that one onto the right, into the mixer. Three-on-one contest, tipped off of fingertips. And now they handball that one back again, looking for Millen. Ball crying the crowd. But we'll try that again. Ball cries the crowd. And the ball goes up into the air again. Ball goes to ground. Skinechny digging in after it. The pill is on the ground. The pill is on the ground. Picked up by Brniarski. And the umpire has picked out a free kick. I believe that was high tackle. And in fact, it'll be a free kick. And it'll go. This is where someone needs to run by now and scream for the handball. Yep. Well, Skinechny is going to go by herself. It's a low line drive. Almost marked by Leslie. She has Peterson in support. Dropped the footy. Soccer down. That one back, not 15, but that would have been good if it was, or was it? Yes, it was. And that was Karen Stoblin who took the mark. Good job by Stabby to cheat up. She's going to look for a centering ball here, it looks like, as she throws that one on to the right, up into the air. Leslie, no, mark taken defensively. And a good job by Mimi Arnett. But once again, and now you can see, as we can see the entire field, as they still are pushing forward. As that one goes, picked off. Here they come. She's going to square up. Kicks for goal. And it's off to the side. Valerie Barbara Axel. She almost had one. But that is finally the first point of the game. And it took 59 minutes. But Valerie Barbara Axel, who, in my opinion, uh, she was best on ground the other night. And she has played a fantastic game. She gets the first point, and with less than a minute to go, might be the only point, but they're pushing in as that one is cleared out up on the far side. It'll drop out into the middle. There is Becky Kraft, who picks up the footy, throws that one on to the right, going in deep, out of the reach of the defender, and the ball will tumble out of bounds with 20 seconds to go. And it must be said, I'll tell you what, it won't look like it on the scoreboard, but it was a very good effort by this Liberty team against a very difficult Monash Blues outfit, outfit with 10 seconds to go. The ball is cleared up into the middle. One-on-one -on -one contest. Chasing it after again is Barbara Axtell, who has the energy of a hybrid car tonight. And there is the siren full-time at Monash University. And the Blues, well, they've shown the Liberty that they are a very good football team. The final score, 9 goals, 10-64 for the Monash Blues. One point, one point only for the Liberty. But as I just said, Peter, I think that the scoreboard really belies a very good effort by the Liberty tonight. This, to be fair, is the toughest side that the Liberty will take on as part of their tour. Even though they play the, ED, the EDFL, WRFL All-Stars, uh, those sides, the, the players that in that team that missed out in finals, they're equivalent to, at this level, what you'd call Division 3, Division 4. So they're playing a Division 1 side here. They're playing against a side that's uh, worked their way up for the grades. They're only four to five spots off getting through to the Premier Division in the VAFA. So besides a couple of lapses, we said the third quarter, and there's a couple of junk time goals in the first and second quarter. Besides that, they've done very well right to hold up and keep the pressure on. Obviously, for the American women, it's about a few things.
in this tour. Not only is obviously improving the basic skills of kicking and handballing, but it's also now, and hopefully they can improve on in game four and game five still to come in this tour. It's now just thinking about the little things. It's about thinking about, as we said, about the player running by. It's about what can I do to go sideways. Uh, none of them have tried yet to go backwards. It's risky, particularly when you, you haven't got those skills like you have at the top level, but yeah. it's just practicing those things. Because what happens is when you go up the line, a bit like that shot for goal that just finished short maybe two or three minutes ago, what happens is, and it happens in this grade, they expect the kick to come up the line. So everyone's default position is to run back about 30 metres and wait for that kick to come in. So you get a cluster of about a dozen players that park themselves underneath the ball. So now it's all about just trying to get that knowledge inside of, don't just think up the line, think where am I going sideways or backwards or do I have a runner going with me? It's just teaching those little things of how do I get round this cluster of players that are 30 metres in front of me. Yeah, and I think the one biggest thing is, is you know, the skills are fairly easy to get mm -hmm. down. But like you said, Peter, the hardest thing to get down in terms of footy is, is, is footy sense and knowing, like you said, to run through, knowing about the leagues, knowing the leads rather, uh, knowing when to spread and all that other stuff. And and a lot of these players, look, we talk about Quoka, you talk about Silvio, and a lot of these players, uh, even is another one, Lizzie even was relatively quiet tonight, did get some of the footy. But um, the newer players, we've seen Amy Arundel pick up the, the, the skills and she has the athletic, uh, the athletic skills as well. And we talk about Valerie Barber Axelm, who really has come through, and, and I've been very impressed by her on this tour. I know we've talked a lot about it the last couple of games, but um, it'll eventually come, I think, especially uh, with game experience like this. This is experience that they're much better teams than they will play back home, which isn't to denigrate the teams back home, but these are very experienced teams. A lot of these girls have been playing three, four, five, six years, even longer, and uh, I think you'll, you'll see more of that, as you mentioned not only in the last two, but these girls will go back to their individual teams and really take what they've learned here back with them. And the one thing as well, as we mentioned before, that uh, during the week they went out to Katie Brennan's KB performance, Katie Brennan from the Western Bulldogs. They've trained at the VU Western Spurs as well, under Debbie Lee, of course, who's uh, operations manager at Melbourne. And hopefully along this tour, they can meet one or two more AFLW clubs and just try and build the connections with the clubs and the players. So therefore, not just to pick their brains on this tour, but hopefully, if it's simple things like just being friends on Facebook, to be able to reach out to those players during their season in 2018, 2019, because they probably won't be back for another three years yeah. for another tour, to be able to speak to them and try and pick their ideas of what do I need to do and improve their game. And those players, particularly when they have, uh, like Alicia Eber, the level ones, level two coach, yeah. etc., they'll be able to give that little bit of feedback of things you can slowly build up into the game. Those things we talked about, they're not going to happen overnight. But being able to have that feedback, and particularly now, you know, as the internet and broadband gets faster and everyone can sit down <laughs> and, watch, and watch videos and everything in front of us, they're able to look at and go, oh, okay, we can see what we're doing. The best thing is to be able to sit down, see what you're doing, and someone can say, we see what we're doing, maybe you should try this. And that's why we're streaming the game tonight. Exactly. And we're glad that you joined us for that. We're glad that you're here as well. Just for recapping the goal scorers, in case anyone is interested for the Monash Blues, Molly McFarlane had a half dozen. She set the world on fire tonight. But she made the, the most of the space that was given to her. Anna O'Donnell had one. Grace Mills had one. And Jackie Allen had one as well. Just, just quickly, I mean, through this tour, there's some of the players that have been standing out so far. Amy Arundale has mm. been great, giving plenty of run. Kaylin Deal in the back line was seen, uh, was been, been going well. El and I saw were very impressive in that first game as well. Mullen doing a little bit of ruck work as well, particularly in that game against the Bull Ants was sensational. Yep. Quoker we've already spoke about. Silvio we've already spoke about. The veteran and Lizzie even as well has been going great. Barbara Axel's having a fantastic tour. Mm -hmm. uh, Erica Saki's been okay as well. I guess it's now, and, and Robin Leslie's who said a standout. I guess now that the, the task is for Judith Stein is to try and find out those players. We haven't picked out some of those that uh, that have been okay, been doing their part, but to try and challenge them over the next couple of games. They're playing against, as I said, the lower the lower division West Brunswick, then they're playing the Division 2 Oakley Chargers. It's now on the coaching staff of the USAFL to pick out those players say, time for you to get on the ball, time for you to be the key players. It's time for you to show us what you've got and take something out of this tour, out of this experience. And the cream will rise to the crop accordingly. Well, the Liberty will be back in action on Sunday morning, Melbourne time. It'll be an 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time start back on, uh, what would that be, Saturday night back in the States. Of course, uh, that'll be up in McAllister Oval uh, against West Brunswick. That game will be followed by the International Cup Round 3 match uh, down at Melbourne University at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. on Saturday night uh, as the USA Liberty finish pool play against the European Crusaders. Of course, tomorrow 
tomorrow night, uh, Friday night back in the States, a 10 p.m. start. It'll be the USA Revolution taking on the Papua New Guinea Mosquitoes in a game that, if they win, it'll only be fr France on Tuesday at Royal Park, standing between them and the Melbourne Cricket Ground. That's going to do it for us, for Peter Holden and for Rod, Rod Spokes behind the camera. Thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. For everyone here at the USAFL, this is Brian Barish saying good night from Monash.